Hey guys, welcome to another Soul First Sunday. Today I want to talk about image. Um, I've gotten some good, really good feedback from you guys about the video I put out, so thank you very much for that. It made me feel a lot more comfortable that I'm not the only one that thinks these things, that um, there's way more good people in the world than shitty trolls, so that's a plus. And um, even the people that aren't interested in this kind of thing totally understood that it's something I had to do and that they just weren't going to watch and so that's awesome. And that way like, I feel like I'm talking to just the people who are interested in this. And I want to talk about image because this has been image and identity. Image and identity has been something that I've been struggling with for pretty much all my life. It's the difference between knowing who I am inside and having that match up with what's on the outside or what people see. And because the fact is, I struggle with the fact that who I am on the inside isn't really what I look like on the outside. <laughs> or at least my image of that. See? And that is is part of the conditioning. The conditioning that we go through when we grow up and we have zero models of, of regular people who can be heroes in our lives. Um, there's no one, like aside from Melissa McCarthy, who is a very, very new hero in media today, who can be just a myriad of characters, can be a woman and a hero and an anti-hero portrayed in media, we haven't really had a lot of that. And this kind of coalesced for me with this comic. Um, I'm putting a link in the description. This was a fucking revelation to me that this woman, Sarah, just encapsulated all the things that I've been thinking about. And especially about associated learning. Okay, because we learn the truth about the world, not because it's told to us directly, but because it's evident in what we see or don't see happening around us all the time. Women especially have the message repeated that your value is based on how you look and your value is not only based on how you look, but if you look in a particular way. And we grow up learning that, but also being told the message that don't judge a book by its cover and you know looks or surface and that kind of message so there's a constant conflict with me i don't know about you but there's been a constant content conflict my entire life between knowing that the appearance of me had very little to do with who i am the appearance of me although maybe attractive initially has no indication, gives you no idea about what's going on inside me, who I am as a person, what I have to offer, what kind of a friend I am, if I'm generous or loving or whether I'm a total asshole. Have you ever had the experience in life where you've met someone who maybe wasn't initially outwardly attractive, but then as you get to know them, they become more and more attractive to you because their personality and their goodness seems to shine out through them. And it actually, for me, changes how they look. They become beautiful. And the flip side is true. Have you ever met someone who appeared beautiful, appeared very attractive, and then as you got to learn their ugliness inside, <laughs> they became less and less attractive and you started seeing them as ugly. This is where I have a conflict with image. I do want to put out my best, for, my best foot forward. I do want to go out into the world and give people a good impression of me. But it's just an impression and it has nothing whatsoever to do with who I am inside who I am as a person and the fact is is I know that no matter how much time or effort I put into style or makeup or hair there is going to be a segment of the population that automatically judges me as being inferior and of less value because I'm fat that is no 
impetus for me to want to put a lot of effort into any kinds of outward appearances because I've already been labeled as less valuable because of how I look, because of straight up my fatness. So this is me just talking to you about it. I don't expect solutions. Um, I wanna hear from you how you feel about this, about your image and identity, especially as an entrepreneur and an artist, going out into the world and having to represent yourself. Um, I become interested in being able to dress and style myself so that I'm comfortable and I can look a little funky, because let's be honest, the plus size fashion is kind of bullshit, right? Pennington's, let's all look like grandmas. No offense to funky grandmas, but honestly, like, none of that style is fashion forward, and none of it speaks to me as an artist and as an entrepreneur. I don't wanna look like a man. I don't wanna look like some sort of a, like a, like a work suit man. Uh, a lot of it's work clothes, a lot of it's fussy blouses and fucking shitty jeans. Seriously, can I just let everyone know in the fashion world, the plus size fashion world, just take the fucking pockets off the pants. Take the fucking pockets off the jeans. Plus size girls have ample booty, okay? And you guys create zero pockets that are flattering, okay? Zero flattering jeans pockets. Just take them off. I don't buy anything with pockets on the back anymore because it's just, it looks like some sort of a, like an anti-gravity device has sucked in the bottom of my ass. It's just so unflattering. Anyway, tangent. I've been interested in looking towards creating fashion for myself that makes me feel funky, that makes me feel good about myself, and isn't based on me waiting until I lose 50 pounds to be able to fit into, you know, a size 14 or something in a regular store. I mean, how long do I have to put off doing what feels good for me on the outside because I have to wait for the size that I am to get small enough to fit into something cool? So, I've been looking at stuff. Check out my, oh, check out my Pinterest. kind of a, a witchy hippie style. That's what I'm into. A little bit hippie, a little bit bohemian, a little bit witchy, a little bit dark, a little bit artsy and funky. Whatever the fuck kind of style that is, that's what I'm attracted to. And you don't often get that kind of stuff in plus size. So I'm trying to figure out ways to do it myself. I have a sewing machine. Um, I'll update you guys with this as it goes on. Who knows, there might never be a video again of anything to do with the clothes because Leslie just gave up because it was a nightmare. I'm not a good sewer. I'm really, I'm not, I'm not good with like hand stuff. I can build things, but sewing is, I, it's like some sort of a snuffleupagus. I'm not sure. I'm not born with the sewing gene. But I wanted to share these ideas with you because this is a constant conflict of me knowing that what I look like doesn't fucking matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have anything to do with who I am as a person and with the desire to go out and give a best impression of me and knowing that even that isn't going to be enough for some people and they're still going to judge me as stupid or incompetent because I'm fat. Fuck. Anyway, I have links below. <laughs> links below. I'm going to talk about a lot of this stuff over and over again, especially if you're interested in the Gina Davis Institute of uh, Women in Media.
This is a big deal and I think we all need to start thinking about how we're being portrayed in the media, not just as women, but as all kinds of different women. Women of color, women of different abilities, women of different sizes, women of different styles and beliefs and cultures, all of that stuff. If you're not represented in the media, you stop existing and you stop seeing yourself mirrored. It's part of the reason why I have an issue with religion. Tangent. Religion has never mirrored to me my divinity as a woman. Zero religions do that, except for the witchy pagan ones. Why do you, th <laughs> why do you think I gravitate to that? Why would I ever be interested in embracing uh, a belief of the world in divinity that did not include my gender, that didn't, doesn't include my female gender? I've got a link down to a blog post that I wrote about that, if you're interested. I, got on, I went on a big tangent here, but I, I mostly portrayed what I wanted to say. Um, I thank you guys for listening to this. Um, I think you guys are working out a little bit as my therapists because as I talk to you, I'm forced to explain and really understand how I feel and how I think about these major issues that have been playing out in my life for my whole life that I've just allowed to sit inside me and have never really brought out to contemplate. So I really super am grateful that you're here to listen and reflect back to me and give me your insight as well. Um, Cause I can't be the only one who's thinking about this and and struggling with these ideas. I, I can't be the only one, right? Right. Anyway, thank you so much um, for listening to me blather on about my stuff. <laughs> eh. Thanks for listening. I, um, I really, really appreciate it. I'm really grateful you're here with me.